Welcome back to In the Ring with Termite and Mr. S. Welcome. So we've got another great show for you today. Let's get right on into it. Let's jump into it. We have Glenn Jackson with us. Actually, a uh, Houstonian or more North Shore, to be precise. Yay, North Shore. Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So, uh, we're representing the uh, the locals here. Yeah. So, so Glenn, I'm just real impressed. I'm honored to be here with you. And, uh, uh, you know, you've come from North Shore. Right. And now you're making movies. Right. And so tell us a little bit about you. Well, um, I was born and raised in North Shore, Houston, Texas. Um, I played baseball. Played. Uh, I ran track. I was in a band. Hey, I like, want to stop you right there. You were good at baseball. Uh, correct. <laughs> yeah, He's yeah you got your, you got your. Why don't you share about your, oh. your jersey there? North Shore Mustangs. We're proud of that. North yeah, Shore Jackson, yeah, yeah. number seven. Yeah, number seven. So tell us about your baseball, and then you know, uh, I heard you were really good. All right. Uh, I played at six years old. I went to the North Shore Park. Uh, in, in Little League and then Pony League and then high school, you know. That shows the value of having stuff like that in a local area like North Shore or any, it could be any place, any city, and it, it shows value in what they do there. Right. So go ahead. I, I interrupted you, and, uh, and I'll do that quite often. <laughs> I, I'm really good at that. <laughs> uh, tell us a little bit more about you. So I I would always draw like I was in a I was in art when I was in school I would do like competitions um, high school I was in the architectural drafting club and we, we had a competition at San Jack I like trophies and stuff like that um, I was in a band I played alto saxophone and when I got to a higher band they uh, they didn't have a tenor saxophone player so I had to learn tenor which is different like key signatures stuff like mm -hmm. that. And then I went back to alto, like in the eighth grade. So your sports, music, art, drawing, you kind of all over the place. Do you enjoy all of it? Do you enjoy one more than the others as time has gone by? Well, when I was in middle school, it, I was really, really busy. So I would go to track practice, and then I would play a baseball game, and then I had to leave a baseball game early to go to the spring concert. And I came late, and my band teacher, he uh, saw that I came late. So he pulled me to the side, like, hey, you know, you want to do all these things, but when you get to high school, you're going to have to pick one. I was like, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> then when I got to high school, I had to pick. You realized yeah. what he's saying was true. So as far as band, I think the first semester I was in band, and I, then I had to quit to play baseball. So you did have to make a choice. I guess someone like you that's you enjoy so many things, you're talented. I mean, was that difficult? Did you kind of feel like you're maybe giving up on something that could have gone somewhere? Or you just didn't look back? Uh yeah, it was it was kind of tough at first, but then it transitioned into making like beats because I was into people like Pharrell, Timberland, like so I started making beats on like FL Studio. And then Reason, and then Cubase, and it just grew from that. So you've dabbled in a lot of different things. And on the music side, I've, I know a little bit about those. But he knows a whole lot about music. He's good. I never <laughs> pursued it like I should have. It's just been a hobby, more of a passion. But to see people like you taking it further and actually doing things with it. So now I would just, your, your life is more revolved around the arts. The sports is kind of like some of your foundational, maybe give you the discipline, you enjoyed it. But now you seem to go in the direction of you know, into the arts. Well, it's a plus when it comes to uh, being casted and stuff. You know, it helps that you have experience in certain sports, like, you know, or even like fighting experience or, you know, driving cars and stuff like that. Uh, you it, know, so that the people will know who he is. Yeah, or, tell them some of the projects uh, that you Tell them what you're doing. He's an actor. He's, he's in movies. So uh, I got uh, my first... I would say kind of big. Uh, it was on Shameless. I was Carl's friend in cadet camp, and that was a three-day shoot. Uh, I got booked on All-American Homecoming. It was one of the core baseball players. Well, it's funny how that happened. Like, I was uh, I was actually active on activation in D.C. for the military. Okay, so you're, you're military as well. Yeah, correct. 
What part of the military are you in? And it's then we'll go back. Army National Guard. Yeah, thank you for right. your service. Well, yes, thank sir, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So I was still like, somebody got COVID. It was around the time they were still like high alert. Uh, and then like six of us had to stay behind. So I had to stay behind. So I'm in like my hotel room for an extra like three weeks. Oh, gosh. So it's like, I'm sitting here just watching all the. Netflix and Hulu I can watch and you know and you have to check in to see if you're okay you have to call in and I seen a posting for a baseball show and I was like oh cool so I submitted like a, you know a current picture of how I look I submitted headshots uh, I submitted film of me playing baseball and like I booked the pilot while I was still in DC so I went when I flew back from D.C., flew to Fresno, picked up my car, drove back to L.A., and I thought it was just a pilot. It was just one day, and I was like, okay, cool. And then a few months later, they are like, hey, you know, it's such and such from, you know, Game Changers. Uh, they, the show got picked up, and we're looking for people to be on the, the core baseball team. And I was like, oh, well, hopefully y'all pick me. <laughs> no, that's why we're calling you. <laughs> like, so... Wow. That's how that happened. So your acting career literally started because you were bored on... In a room. In a room from COVID <laughs> on serving the country as a national... Right. That's awesome. Uh, that's you just made eliminate. use of the time. Some people just watch Netflix for three weeks. You're like, hey, how, how, maybe I can be on Netflix. I like it. So right. you took some lemons and made yourself <laughs> some lemonade Right, is what you did. And that's pretty cool. I like that. And it just, uh, I mean, that's amazing. I mean, you take the step. So, you know, for other people out there, I know a lot of young people, my kids, like the idea of being on TV. And so what would you recommend to folks? Um, just starting off young. Uh, the younger you start, the better the opportunity for you. Uh, maybe get to acting classes and be in a theater. Like, even in high school, I wish I was in a theater. Like, I went to a school play in high school, but that was only for like extra credit in the English class. And I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. But then I never thought of it after that. I never thought I'd be acting. And so you still got picked up to do a role without having any theater classes or training. So what made you, why do you think you got the role? Like, Would it just come out of you naturally? Like, hey, I'm just gonna be an actor? Well, it first starts with like the look. Um, if you're just, if you're just like a okay, a person on the baseball team, you're not like the lead or anything. So it doesn't, you know, those guys they go to like acting school, acting classes, but it's a start. Right, you got to start somewhere. Right. So if you kind of start with the the image, they got to fill all these cliches. They got to fill a team that kind of gets your foot in the door, and now you can grow into. I, I'm assuming you're looking for lead roles. Is that that's some of your goal? Right. And um, it was good to, like, just to be on set and just watch everybody, like, how the actors, they, you know, their habits, kind of learn as you watch. Learn from observing. Yeah. You know, acting is tough. It's actually very tough. I got to do my first little part. Yeah, I've seen yours. And uh, anyway... Um, don't you laugh. I'm not laughing. Uh, I haven't done gonna, anything we, of the we're, sort. We're going to fight. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impressed. Uh, but um, acting is tough. I, I had just a little small part on uh, saying a few things, and and acting is tougher than what people think it is. And uh, what did you think it was tough, or are you thinking it's cool? Um, the tough part is when you have people on set, and it's like, say it's people that's cracking jokes and stuff like that. So you're, you know, contributing to people breaking character instead of just keeping everything quiet and stuff like yeah. that. That's a, well, not for me. That's tough for like, let's say some of the lead role people. Um, but just, um, you know, repetitive things. Like, you know, you do a shot, you do a turnaround, and then they do extra shots and stuff like that. And it's work. So basically, it is work. So you're like you're saying, you got to stay focused, don't break character. So it's fun, but at the same time, you're there to get a job done. And I guess you're saying sometimes people will distract you, and that's one of the hardest things. Yeah. 
So, so you're in a room, you're watching something, and you say, hey, I, I think I'm going to try that. So all of a sudden, you you send off, you took the action. That's big words right there. you got to go for whatever it is you want to do. You can't sit back. It didn't come through the TV to you. You had to go to it, and you made it happen. So what are some of the other shows that you've played? I know you've played in a couple of them. Yeah, um, I am a basketball player in White Man Can't Jump movie. It's a you know white man can jump. <laughs> and, uh, I'm not one of them. <laughs> the McClung guy, he won the contest, uh, dunk contest last year. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. So you started. You're in that movie, has, and then what other things have you worked on? I think you mentioned another one. Uh, whereas one I'm currently working on, um, it's an independent film. And there's some things you can't talk about. You oh, told right. us that earlier. Yeah, right. you can tell so us can what be, you can. be real generic. It's an independent film. When's it coming out? When uh, can you re- reveal Tell that? us everything you can without so, getting in trouble. <laughs> right, right. So I booked it before the strike, and I'm playing Jackie Robinson. Uh, but the thing is, Jackie Robinson is right-handed. I'm left-handed. So and are they getting that accurate? They won't let you kind of do right-handed. You're having to learn, or I'm having to learn right-handed. Wow. So wow. so you're overcoming. So I've been like fielding, catching, and trying to bat right-handed. How's that going? Wow. It it looks no one can tell. Well, okay, you watch yourself on I start film. Throwing it, then yeah, it's like okay, it's, you feel it. Right-handed. But if you look at yourself on film, you're like okay, it's starting to look convincing. Right. And just see if that was me, I'd be throwing this way with my right hand, my left hand, I'd be going. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just have no control. Now, I can throw a good jab with a left hand. I bet you if you focused on but, like anything uh, else, you can eventually But I can't imagine. It <laughs> just feels the funny. <laughs> it does. Don't do uh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, there's, there's a lot of things you have to overcome <clears throat> in acting, and that's a tough one. Switching completely, switching uh, from one hand to the other, and so uh, is there any drills you do for it, or do you just practice every day? Uh, I had a scene partner for a while, and that's, this person will help me with my self tapes. Uh, I still have two self tapes that they currently filmed, and but after that, I just started doing my own self tapes, just submitting for stuff. You, can, you know, you do the slate, mm-hmm. then you do the actual audition. Um, but as well as acting, I've done, like, uh, I was a body double for, uh, someone on your honor, the uh, security guard. Okay. Mm-hmm. He was like a bouncer for like a bar and they shot his scene in New Orleans and they shot me at Santa Clarita Studios, but they shot me from behind. So they needed somebody that looks kind of like him. Right. And I have also have a music department credit on the oh, soundtrack wow. on the movie. That's cool. Oh, that sounds fun. So I know when people get real big time, they got agents that find all these jobs for us. It sounds like right now you're hunting down and you're you're your own agent. You're trying to make stuff happen. Correct. I mean, I'm currently looking for one, but, you know, you got to have momentum. Right, right. And you'll get there. You'll get there. You, do you enjoy that part? Are there some, that you, some things you enjoy about it more than others? Uh, I just wish somebody else could do that part. Yeah. So I could just only worry about this. And it sounds like that's the direction you're going. I've right. got somebody to introduce you to when we get through with this. Cool. That, and a lady that helps me on some things. And uh, she may be able to help you more because she does more into acting. And uh, But she has a lot of dancers. Diana. Yeah, you never know. They know people. <clears throat> yeah. So talk about some of the, you know, obviously to get where you're at. It's not all smooth sailing. It sounds like you did get some pretty good breaks along the way. Tell us some of the stories that you've, you know, that were challenging. You thought, like, maybe I couldn't do this. Maybe I'm just, I need to give up. Were there any times you felt like, I need to give up. This isn't for me. Uh, it's just been too hard. Uh, well, I can talk about how I got from Houston to L.A. So, sure. Yeah. Um, during, at night, I was working at Hotel Derrick as, a, like, a bill service, you know, valet. And during the day, I was working at Exxon Mobil Corporation, uh, organizing offices. It was like temp work, wow. like office work. Mm-hmm. So I just kept doing that, and I saved enough money. Well, I saved like $3,000. And, you know, packed all my, I was living with my sister at the time. I packed all my clothes in my car, 
you know, I had a dresser, but I couldn't fit the whole dresser in there, so I took the shelves out, put it in the back, uh, and actually almost ran out of gas in the middle of Texas. <laughs> so, like, I'm not used to gas stations being 30 miles apart from right, each like, other. Right, oh, there's always another one. We're in, we're yeah. in a big town. Right. So, like, I pulled over, and I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to run out of gas. And then, you know, they had, like, those, was it scarecrows or whatever? Like, Vultures? Vultures, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So it was vultures that was circling. Me, and I was like, okay, this is Uh-oh. how I end the world. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, you know, I like flagged down a truck driver and he was like, hey, if you go back the other way and take this exit, that exit, and there's a gas station. So I turned around, I went there, and it was like one of those old fashioned gas stations, not the digital ones, like the road. Like out of a movie. Yeah. So I filled up and I actually got a gas can too and put some in there. So an extra. That was like my first hurdle and I haven't even got there yet. So I went from Houston to El Paso the first day, got a hotel, El Paso to Indio, which is Palm Springs, then got a hotel and then drove the rest of the way the next day. So you just, it wasn't smooth sailing. You had to, like, make some sacrifices. You're working two jobs, night and daytime, just to save up money to make this dream come true. I think that's the part I want to emphasize to people. It's like, you have a dream, but it's it's not comfortable. You had to do a lot of things. You didn't have a life, I would imagine. You were working all the time, but you've got a goal. Yeah. Right. And then even when I got there, it kind of oversold the place. It oh, wasn't okay. that good. So it was... The bottom floor was like a Japanese restaurant, and then the top floor was like apartments. And it's probably TMI, but like <laughs> they would have they had like a roach problem. Okay. So like I would have to like sleep with the lights on so they don't mm. come out scare of away the roaches. Space. So um, yeah, but it was like all utilities paid, so I just like, kept them on. So <laughs> no. sleep with the lights it. on, right? So, so things like that is like the stories that you're going to appreciate, you're going to laugh at later on. Like you've literally slept in roach-infested places just to make this thing happen. And it's not just fun and not party. And people look at entertainment and they look at YouTube and they just think it's constant entertainment. The party is this, the party is that. And you're talking about the, the ugly, not fun stuff. Right. You did. You told us a story earlier about I think you were on a different role where you said you – you saw how the actors were treated, and that's kind of what triggered maybe an idea inside. Yeah, like uh, I used to get like internships. You know, I try to be like a runner and stuff like that, or in the entertainment business. PA, yeah. So you didn't start on the acting. You started out as just like kind of on set helping helping out. Right, and then I saw how the actors were being treated. You know, they get the the lint roller, they get the shoes in the bag, take the shoes out. They like do their hair or whatever, and it's like. I think I want to do that. <laughs> I like that. I like that. And that's what just said, hey, I need to I need to make something happen to become that. Right. Well, that this is awesome seeing where you started from, where you're going. Uh, is there anything that you're looking forward to that you're, uh, you know, do you have anything? Well, I'm trying. I know he's. Yeah, like he kind of reaching. Say, yeah, he can't talk too much yeah, about his project, but uh, what are your dreams? He's got something big coming up that he can't tell you, and I'm trying to pull it out of him. <laughs> so so uh, I do want to s- still do music. I am currently doing music. Um, I have a song that's not out yet. It's with a, uh, a girl that lives in Germany. She was actually on The Voice in Germany. Uh, Can you share details on that yet or no? Uh, sure. It's a song called Bomb. It's featuring... Uh, B.B. Tomas. Okay. And she does Afrobeats. And then, but it's another one that I'm making. She has three of my tracks, but I can't say who it is. Okay, that's fine. But, is there a, can someone follow you? Do you have social media that people can see when these things are released? Do you have a? Sure, you can follow me at the Glenklin Sound on Instagram, Threads, uh, TikTok. Oh, it's all the same. Say it again. It's the the Glen Glen Sound. The Glen Glen Sound. Glenn Glenn and you have Sounds. that on TikTok, Instagram. The same same name. Yep. We'll post those in the bottom of this when we do the podcast, yeah. but just Ooh. so people can hear it. What are well, some of the things? If you had to, you know, obviously what you've done in your 
career, which is still just kind of starting. What would you say to young people just aspiring? You know, if you can give out one message to um, people, try and inspire them, knowing that they're know, going to go through uh, obstacles. Never give up. Always uh, persevere. Um, don't t- don't let nobody tell you who you are. You That's know, right. Write your own story. That's right. Write your own story. Write I like that. Write your own story. I like that. Yeah. Write your own story. Yeah. yeah I think it's pretty cool message right That's there. That's a great message. Like to end it with. Yeah, I Write think we should close story. it up right there. And we will like to have you back. Obviously, you're young. Yeah. We can't say how young you are. But yeah. you're going to have a, a long career ahead of you. We'd love to have you back and hear some more about some of these bigger projects. <laughs> so thanks for coming on. Well, thanks for having hey. me. It's been a blast, man. We, we like so to good close to out every, every episode with... Keep your guard up. Keep your guard up. So things you can come back to in life. See if you can do it. Uh, Keep Keep your guard guard up. up.